So I cleaned up a few of my old rocks today, and we're cleaning shop here at the uh, Mountain Smith Workshop and Laboratory. And I, I found a few pieces that uh, have been around for a long time. And these were some of my first diamonds. And these are, there, there's a pair of them. And they're, they're a light blush of pink. One, I, they're, they're almost uh, identical, almost. Same size, all of that. But you can see this one's a little more sparkly. And I, I don't think it's just because it's closer to the light. Maybe it is. Yeah, maybe it is. I bought a pair of these, and I don't know if these are the ones. Um, and they, they, one was a diamond, and one was silicon carbide. And you couldn't tell the difference. You could not tell the difference. And I know the man who cut them also didn't know the difference because it was a natural silicon carbide. We make a synthetic like this called moissanite. But making them this big is uh, prohibitively expensive um, because it's not easy to squish a little rock into smaller rock. And that's what they do to make diamonds, right? They, they put it in an anvil between two diamonds. and smoosh them, which is how they're made uh, in kimberlite pipes, right? Uh, they're, they're held on the surface of the earth and an asteroid hits. Boom! And then there's a, a cone of compression underneath. Um, so we're looking at the downside here, right? The, and, and a cone of compression goes right straight down into the surface of the earth, but it doesn't go very far. Well, it goes down, you know, depending on, on the size of the asteroid, right? Some of them are big, some of them are not. Um, so, that's why kimberlite pipe diamonds are so small, but mine are not kimberlite pipe diamonds. Now, this is probably natural zircon, probably, I don't know. I haven't tested it, and I don't want to scratch it at the moment, so we're just going to look at it. It's beautiful. And I don't care if it's a diamond or a zircon or what, right? I don't care, because I'm not trying to make a bazillion dollars off of it. I don't want to sell it to you. I don't want to lose it or scratch it or anything. I like it just the way it is, because I get to take pictures. I think it's a diamond, actually. I think this is the diamonds. Look at this one. It's a pair that I got for making some jewelry for my wife. I don't wear jewelry. I, I, I don't even wear a wedding ring. I used to. I, I, my wedding ring um, wore out. <laughs> it got broken. And came off, and uh, but I didn't. I, you know, my wife knows I love her for sure. I tell her every day, at least once a day, but probably more often. <laughs> so when I first got going on diamonds, I bought this. Uh, it was. Um, a crystal, you know, sitting there like this. Um, and I didn't know what diamonds were. So I started uh, polishing it, trying to polish it. It's not easy. They're very, very, very hard. Um, they're also very, very, very clear. And that's how I started learning about diamonds. Now, sometimes, 
see how this um, this one is from my friend in India. And I know that because it's an old-fashioned cut. It's not uh, a perfectly measured, uh, um, calculated faceting job. Somebody sat around a, a spinning diamond wheel, a, a disc, sitting flat on a table, and they have five guys sitting around, and they do the different steps of the polishing. Um, and they they cut them by hand. They they've got a little thing that they're that they hold in their against their arm, uh, and it, it rests on their elbow. And then we have a place for our hand to hold the thing on the hold the stone against the little wheel. And there's a uh, a gimbal thing, a two axis gimbal thing, and you can rotate it with increments around the 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 rotation and, and so you can move the stone any which way you want and then do a measured uh, thing but they, they don't measure each one perfectly right they they just do it by eyeball and since they've been doing it for a long time they do it pretty good but these facets are always um, different Always different. This is the other kind. This is the... Uh, no, this is one of his, too. Look at this one. This is a really nice one. Look how clear that is. So, and, and the... the purple ones are from the deepest part of the fault line. This is when when the when the um, as molten rock cools it, it moves you know it's moving upwards towards the surface and it starts cooling as it gets away from the rest of the semi molten mantle. The semi molten mantle is um, semi molten because it's radioactive, right? So, um, as it moves up, away from that bath of radioactive heat, it starts cooling. And when it reaches 3,800 degrees, these guys start popping out of it. It, it, it cools below their melting point, and they become... solid. But nothing else is. Nothing. There, there's no contamination in these because oops, there's nothing else solid at that temperature. This has got some, some little scratches left on it because I, I have been banging it around in my other diamonds and, and I also um knew that I'd have to repolish this. You can't see this when it's, you know, over here. You can only see it when you look at them close. And, and I look at them with the reflection, right, so that I can see those scratches. But this doesn't have those, those absolutely perfect facets that you see on diamonds and jewelry stores. This is the way people have cut them for thousands of years. And they, they come out of the Ganges, right? My buddy who, that cuts these in India gets them right out of the old riverbed. Not out of the river itself, where the river used to flow. And um, they are in the volcanic ash in the fault line. Rivers and creeks and dry washes, like here in the desert, follow fault lines because fault lines are the cracks in the earth where, where it broke. Right? And, and the things go up and it leaves like a gap like this. So, 
But diamonds aren't always cubes. They can form cubic or hexagonal. And it's not hexagonal so much. I, I mean, this one doesn't even have six sides. It's got five sides. One, two, three, four, five. Right? How about that? Quartz can't do that, for sure. And, um, you know what? Quartz isn't that clear. It can't be because it only has one double covalent bond. All covalent bonds are double. I say double. Right? They share an electron on this side and an electron on this side. And in diamonds, there, there's um, they have four electrons in their outer valence orbit. All four of those share with the atoms around them. So it, it, it's a double, double covalent bond. And that's why all diamonds are so hard, you can't scratch them in any sort of normal way. And, and if you look at this, this isn't scratched or broken. This is the crystallization. And, and it wasn't going this way was going this way. It was growing up this way. And these are the growth faces here. And you can see they, they, they grow along the planes of cleavage. Yeah, that's what those are. And, and there's a, a whole bunch of the really beautiful purple ones that we call amethyst um, that are... <laughs> Uh, that are called the chevron amethyst because they've got these uh, these funny looking things on the side and people think well they're growing up this way and they're ghosts right <laughs> no man that's the growth face of a crystal and it was growing probably kind of this way but but towards this point right here and if you look it kind of makes like the corner of a box. And the planes of cleavage pass through it. Some are going this way, right? Some are going this way. Like this. Boom, boom, boom. And, and, they, and they cross each other. And where they cross each other is what creates the lines on the sides. Okay? And, and there's only two planes of cleavage. But where they cross each other creates the z-axis. So from here to probably right over here. Maybe here. I don't know. Maybe here and here. Um, no, I think this one's a reflection. Maybe not. What you do is you look down here. See, this is opening outwards like this because it grew this way, right, up this way. And so the, the layers stacked like this. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. And, and it started out real small, but the sh same basic shape, right? Same basic shape. And it wasn't in solid rock. It was in molten rock. And it was floating on the top of the molten rock as it moved upwards. And that's what you have here. It's a crystal that formed with basically as much carbon as was available in the molten rock from the semi-molten mantle. And so this is just a little one. Man, they get really, 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 really big. We call them quartz, but they're not, man. This is 10 on the most scale of hardness. I can take a, a, a known diamond, and I know these guys are. And I can try to scratch this. 
There's a nice faith right here. On the top faith here, somewhere, there's a little dished out place, and we'll find it here. There it is. See that? That's a hopper. That's a hopper. It's not broken. It's part of the crystallization, and it happens on the bottom. On the bottom. And this is the top. This is the way the crystal was growing. Kind of this way, because it's growing here, too. This was not broken. This is not broken. I can't scratch it with a known diamond, right? Look at that beautiful stone, man. <laughs> what do I know about diamonds? I know nothing, right? I'm, uh, I'm not a five-hour classes of uh, GIA propaganda. Um, no, man, I've got about um, 60 years of uh, science behind me. My father was a physicist. He built bombs. And um, I teach peace and give away diamonds. Far out, man.